Hello everyone and welcome to another Grindin' Talk. We are today, <clears throat> in today's episode of Grindin' and Talkin', we will be fighting the Easy A. I've also got the smooth, I've got the, not smooth, I have the super late night Animal Crossing OST playing, so we're gonna chill. Um, I have not done this at all yet, even though I have both the dudes and this is our fantastic Easy A's, so... It is what it is. Let's get down to business. And let's just talk. Man. What a weird week it's been. So I returned back to work finally, which has been nice. Because uh, I, believe it or not, I have an actual... I know, I've said this plenty of times. Like That's constantly why I miss videos, because I have an actual ass job. Because YouTube money ain't gonna... I haven't even made my first... I, I have started making money on YouTube. I'm just not allowed to get any of it at the moment because I haven't reached the quota. I haven't reached the minimum YouTube is, which is $100. I haven't reached 100 yet. But when I do, I'll have 100 spare dollars, which will be nice. Uh, I don't know if I have to um, do something special for the first 100. I don't know. I don't know. It is nice, to, the idea of like, oh, finally, hard work after two, over two years of trying to do something on YouTube. I finally made it over a thousand, I got approved, and then I finally got my first money out of it. It's pretty nice. It's kind of similar to how, um, because I don't know, I don't know, have I ever said it? No, I don't think so. Back when I started um, college, all those years ago, once I finished college, I actually went back in there and I went in for a, um, I have my, my first degrees in animation, and then my second, I went back into that college and I got a master's degree in business. Now, um, that was very dumb because I didn't have any work experience because I didn't have, I never did any jobs and never did anything while I was at college. All I did was study. Now here's the fucked up thing. And if you're someone out there who's currently doing college and uh, you don't have someone that can reliably get you into a job, then uh, it's actually a fucking bummer to find a job. It's worse. It's terrible. I don't know how people, like, expect you to, like, kill yourself trying to get a degree, get multiple degrees, and then expect you to have work experience because they also had expected you to start working during that period. It's insane. It's like, what? And then when you leave, it's like, all right, now everyone, ha now you have nothing but debt. And now that's all I have. I have this YouTube and I have debt. So it's great. Um... Man, that got really weirdly dark out of nowhere. Anyway, let's get back onto this. What I was trying to say is, is that it was actually very hard for me to find a job. So when I finally got my first job, which was working at um, a Universal theme park, I've never, I don't think I've ever said this before. No, I've never talked about it. Um, so consider this also a kind of day in the life of Wookie, but um, so my first job was at Universal uh, for the theme parks. And, um, the job that I went to go sign up for was, um, I forget who told me to go sign up for. I think it was maybe my sister, but I'm almost positive that when I signed up there, I, no, I told them I had a master's in business, but it was like, oh, you have a master's in business and you want to be a patio host, which was, which is what they called like basically janders. Um, it's those people that you see around the park who like, and to be fair, they I guess they do more than janders. I think, you know what? I don't know the distinction. If you're a janitor, tell me if there's a distinction between being a patio host and being a janitor. I always saw it as a very fancy way of saying I'm a janitor. Um, but I might be wrong on that one. You never know. So anyway, I went to go get the job interview. And then the first job interview I did, I had to like, um, I had to do some weird stuff. I had to be like, it was like an like audition. They were basically auditioning us because if you've never ever been to a park, all the people there are super like happy and like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the reason that people are like that because they like make you do like exercises to see how good you are at like team building, how good you are in like everything you're doing. And the reason I knew that they were about to do it, I was actually able to get into it because um, a friend of mine had, was a manager at the at the Universal, so I, I hit him up for some questions like, bro, what are they going to make me do? He's like, all right, listen, show initiative, which is like pretty funny because it was like he knew me and he was like, uh, if you're familiar with my day in the life of Wookiee, it was uh, Zarbon, who the friend we call Zarbon, but Zarbon basically told me like, 
Yeah, you're gonna have to be not like yourself, and you're gonna have to actually show initiative and show like teamwork. Because it's like you're good at working, but also you're very shitty at actually being able to like show it off. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So I'll remember to actually like look like I give shits. And to be fair, I did because I really wanted the job and I really wanted to work at the theme park. So I show crazy initiative, like everything that made it seem like. And in any situation where they're like, here's this bizarre thing you have to do, basically build an entire land for our theme park. What do you think? And it's like, hmm. I was like, all right, here's how we're going to do it. It's like, all right, I don't know what dumbass idea we have, but here you go. We're going to, and obviously I didn't say dumbass because if I did, I would never have gotten hired there. Um, but I was always like gung-ho about anything. It was like more like, we have to try something, you know? Come on, pr come on, team. Let's do it. And I eventually did get a job there. Uh, but anyway, I passed the first part of it because once you finish that, then they started doing like um, casting calls where they're like, if your name is called, go here. And if your name was called, it meant that you had to leave from the back because they were basically saying you're not going to be um, working here. Um, so basically they called out a bunch of people and then everyone else in the room was like, oh my god, what's going to happen? And they say, you're all passed. And it's like, yay, your training begins. And then by the way, this was the first step. So once I finally got into it, like, then they were like, okay, now you're entering a period where it's like, we're going to be training you, but you could still at any point, you still have another pass to go through. So I, st even though I had a job and I was getting paid, I still did not actually have the job yet. I had to go through like a, another set of auditions basically. So I got like all my training done. I got all the hearing and, um... I was good to go, basically. I was good to start my life as a patio host. Um, and I was getting paid. And for my first paycheck there, it felt so good because I was like, finally, I made money on my own. And now my feet are tired and I'm dead as hell because I'm not used to walking around. But this is my money that I made and it feels great. Um, and then <laughs> some more stuff that happened. Um, because now I'm just going to say my entire experience. I did not have that job for very much longer. I think I only had it for two more weeks. So... The first time I go in there, they're like, okay, day one. Basically, I'm like, all right, you have to make a good impression. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all off. My family set me off. Uh, we're all, I'm all good. He's like, okay, change into your uniforms. And you have to actually change in there in like um, wardrobes and stuff. So I was like, okay. And then I was the last person to leave out of there because I didn't know how to put a belt on. Because I had never actually had to put a belt on by myself before. Um, because I'm not a fancy person and I've never been to parties where I didn't have like, right before I left, I was like, my mom would always be like, all right, let me do a quick check. And if you're Hispanic, you know what I'm talking about because, um, Hispanic moms or at least Mexican moms are extremely like, oh, we have to check you at every single point. You have to look your greatest because you never know. You could find the love of your life out there and you need to look good. And I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. <laughs> if you, if you want to do it, fine. I'm not going to like freaking bother with this at all. Uh, and she always did, of course. Um, so that was always fun. But so she, for the most of my life, she was basically the ones who had to put all the clothes in terms of putting it on and actually making it look good. Um, so I had to ask one of the managers to say, like, I don't know how to put on my bell. And it was the worst feeling ever because I was like, I'm not, I'm like a huge guy. So I'm really big. I'm, I'm Hispanic. I got a huge mustache. I got pretty big in terms of, um, weight. I think I'm over 400 at the very, t at the very least. And I'm over six feet tall. And, um, so I'm big. I'm very big. So this giant Hispanic man is asking my much smaller than me manager, can you help me with my belt? <laughs> and it was terrible. And I was like, oh God, I'm basically fired right here. This is bad. Um, and I thought for like, but I, you know, early day jitters. So that didn't have any problem with that. <sighs> Next day I started doing, um, start going back there i'm like all right i'm trying to do my best i'm like not built to be standing up a whole bunch but i'm basically trying i'm trying doing the best i can out there i'm like dying out in this heat as well because this is also california and it was during the summer so this is during peak sun hour so i was out there boiling i like literally have gone in I didn't used to be as brown as I used to. I got, like, more tan because of my experience working there. Like, I used to be one shade uh, lighter, uh, and I got darker from my experience in there. At least that's what I feel would happen. Um, 
there's no science behind what I say. Anything I say can and won't be used against me in a court of law. Anyway. Yeah, sure, hope not. Um, continue on. One of the things they tell you at Universal when you're trying to work at the park that's very, like, useful to have is, like, you have to be super... Like, the people there are paying a whole lot of money, and some of these people here are, like, um, coming from out of, like, state. So they have very different customs about what's scary and what's not, so you always want to make sure that they feel welcome there. Um, so one of the mandates they actually have is that you can't have, um, at least when I was working there, is that you couldn't have a big beard unless it was super groomed. They couldn't have a crazy beard. And I have a crazy-ass beard. Um, so... Uh, what ended up happening is, is that on day one, they were like, hey, keep your beard in check. And I said, you got it. I literally shaved um, uh, a week ago. And they're like, cool. Remember, keep an eye on it. It's like, you got it. I come in the very next day and I get pulled aside and I'm like, oh, yes, manager. And they're like, um, you were told to keep your beard in check. And I was like, but I shaved my beard. And they're like, yeah? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard what he said, but he didn't say, like, go shave it. Did he? I didn't know that he wanted me to shave it now, because literally it had been a week. I don't, I don't know. Like, my beard grows so quickly that, like, you could have it um, shaved at a zero level, zero level, and it would immediately come back. Um, that's how strong this damn beard of mine was. Um, I think this song is a little bit too loud, so let me quickly put it down a bit. It's getting a little jaunt here. Um, oop, there we go. Uh, so I was basically told, like, your manager higher up told you to go shave your beard. And I'm like, ma'am, um, if he wanted me to shave my beard, then I would have shave my beard but he never told me shave my beard i was told keep an eye on it and let me tell you i'm keeping an eye on it it's not that crazy so and they're like okay if that's how you want to be this is the brown um if i have if i had like one bad flag already it's the fact that you know i didn't know how to dress myself in the beginning so that's flag one that's bad super bad um flag two i am now technically have fought with a manager over what they said i was doing because I would fight this to the tooth and nail. I never was told that to shave it. And they were a damn liar. They think, if they wanted me to shave my beard, they should have just told me to shave the damn beard. I hate it when like people are like not direct with you. It's like, if you want something from me, please tell me. And if you want it now, tell me now. Because otherwise, I interpret it the way I want to interpret it. Anyway, so that's basically my strike two. But, um, so the reason they want to keep it that way is because you want to, like, not scare people. So I was like, okay, cool. That's fine with me. Um, so on the, one day on the way back, I had, I met another dude there who we'll call, um, what's a good code name that I haven't used from Dragon Ball? Let's call him, hmm, Jiren. So Jiren and I started at the same time. I hung out with Jiren a whole bunch. He was a very cool dude. Um, when we were going back to the training area, in order to get through the training area, you had to actually go through like a restaurant. Uh, and one of the things that they had told us at the Universal is that you always want to make people happy. So if they're having a bad day, try and console them. Um, so then my friend gets stopped because a lady starts talking to him. And as I'm, we were literally all the way in the back. And as I look back, I go, I see him. And he has a look in his face of like, this woman is angry. And I was like, oh no. So I decided to come back and I was like, well, what's the problem here, ma'am? So I was basically helping because he was basically dead in the water from what I could see. Um, and she was like, yeah, hi. Um, we came here all the way from Florida, which is already a great sign. Shout out to Florida. Um, we came here all the way from Florida and my son wanted to see Patrick and there's no Patrick. How is it that there's no Patrick in the, in the, in the park right now? And I honestly had no way to answer her back because I was like, I don't, you know, I'm very sorry that Patrick's not in the park for you today, ma'am. Uh, there's a meet and greet schedule right here. I'm sorry that I didn't meet up with you. Yada, yada, yada. Here's the second thing she said to me. It's like, also, it's California and there's no sun out. Because literally, it was actually one of the few days in summer where the sun wasn't out, which was great for me. But she's like, it's supposed to be still in California. It's supposed to be sunny all the time. How come there's no sun? Where's the sun? And I was like, 
I, in my head, I was like, bitch, do you really want me to, like, summon the sun for you? Because I don't get paid enough money to summon the sun. Um, I'm barely making a living here, and arguably, I'm not even living, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I didn't know how to answer her, so I was like, oh, I'm, you know, I laugh it off. I'm like, oh, ha, ha. And then finally, at this point, our trainee, who was supposed to be in charge, was like, there's two of a, there's two people missing here. So he went back and he basically saved our asses out of there. He's like, um, I thought this was going to be the last strike for me, but he ended up being like, no, it's all perfectly fine. Um, you know, you did the best you could in that situation. So me and Jaren basically got let off uh, pretty easily, I'd say. But here's the unfortunate thing, because me and Jaren did not actually both survive our <laughs> entry period for it, for this. Us and another lady there were eventually let go. The three of us were let go. He was let go because he eventually broke a dishwasher, which is really funny because we went back in there one day, it's like, someone broke one of the dishwashers. And they showed us really early on, like, all right, you're gonna be working some of the stuff here. Like, you have to be very careful because it's very delicate and we need to make sure it's running. So someone had broken it. And when Jiren came back, he was like, dude, did you break it? And we were like joking. He's like, I don't know. I was already broken. And I was like, oh my God, you actually legitimately broke it. That's hilarious. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared about my job. I'm like, I would be too, bro. So Jiren ended up, that ended up being the thing that cost them the job at the end. Uh, and then the other lady just like constantly showed up late. It was crazy how late she was. Um, Here's the thing that I think was eventually my strike three. So I have to use the bathroom a whole lot. Um, it's usually because like one, when I'm out there in the sun, I need to drink water. So I drank a lot of water because I was dying in the heat. And I didn't want to die of um, dehydration. And dehydration is actually something that's pretty bad in at least our family because my sister once fainted um, in the line for the first Michael Bay Transformers line because of dehydration. Uh, that's a story for another day. But the point is, like, in my mind, I was like, you can't get dehydrated because it would be oh, so bad. I saw what happened to my sister. I don't want that to happen to me. So I had to constantly keep my hydration levels up. But then because of that, I had to constantly use the bathroom. So a lot of the time, I would be leaving my post to go use the bathroom. And I would use it a lot <laughs> because I just needed to use it. So I think that ended up being my strike three. So when they did the final casting call, we all got together, I think, behind the minions, like into the Italian bistro or something, a fake Italian bistro, because it's not real. Um, they started doing the same thing they did in the beginning, which is calling our names. My name got called. I was cut. I was super gutted. Jiren was pissed. Super pissed. The girl that we were with started crying. It was terrible because the other thing was that I was the last person to get their name called. So as I was leaving, super dejected, I got to hear everyone else say, you keep the jobs. And I heard a giant like, yeah, <laughs> like going for the back. And I was like, oh, you bastards. Um. And then later on, when I was getting my last paycheck and they were telling me, letting me love, he was like, do you have any questions before you leave? I'm like, um, before I go, can you please tell me why I was fired? Because I needed, I didn't have a lot of work experience, so I need to know, like, yo, what's up? Um, anything you can tell me would be perfectly good, because I need to be able to go into a better job, uh, better than this one. I didn't tell them that, but whatever my next job, I want to make sure I don't make the same mistake. And they said hygiene i said hygiene and they're like yeah you were told to cut your to shave your beard and i was like oh, okay i'm sorry to hear that like there was so much in me that just wanted to like be like the balls on you people to even like it's bad enough you're firing me and then but you're firing me over a bullshit reason and not like a legit reason like i went to the bathroom too much but they can't fire me for that so yeah that's how i lost and had my first job and it was a it was a nice job while it lasted the only problem i had with it was that it was constantly me walking around but i had unlimited access to the parks which was great i got to ride the minions ride a whole bunch on my first day because my um i had to wait for um a pickup for um uh, my ride so i got to spend a lot of time at just like universal chilling which was the best part of the job i feel that and learning about some of the weird history like i talked to some of the people who had been working there since the park first opened and they're like yeah there was a five o's goes west show it was like five o's goes west and then i invented i eventually had to like look it up because i was like why would motherfuckers make a 
of an attraction around Fievel. I mean, I love Fievel, don't get me wrong. He is my favorite Jewish mouse. Only behind the second favorite Jewish mouse is the mouse from Mouse. If I was going to do it, if I was going to make a list, I would be Fievel at number one, number two, Mouse from Mouse, and then number three, Fievel's dad, because I think Fievel's dad is a, a fantastic man, plays the fiddle like a mean man. So those are my top three favorite Jew Jewish mouses. But going back, I, can't, I just can't believe like the idea of like at any point in your life when you were growing up and you were seeing Fievel, were you thinking like Fievel was on the same tier list as like... Lion King and stuff, I guess. But to be fair, I don't remember when Fievel came out. Was Fievel like the 80s? It was a Don Bluth movie. So, but I guess in my head, I'm thinking it's... Don Bluth had to be like around... Oh man, when, when was Don Bluth? Does anyone... First of all, does anyone know what Don Bluth is? Because Don Bluth is... Let me look it up. One moment. I'm gonna look it up in the background, but let me get... Don Bluth was an animator... He's the person who made the, um, the Troll in Central Park movie. He made, um, he was, like, the director behind it, but he was the, um, um, I, I was gonna say A Nightmare Before Time, The Land Before Time, <laughs> everyone's favorite dinosaur movie. Uh, yeah, so, let me see. All right, I'm on the Don Blue Wikipedia page now, so let me see. American Tale came out in 1986. Oh, and Secret of Nim and All Dogs Go to Heaven. So All Dogs Go to Heaven would be competing with the 90s movies. No, All Dogs Go to Heaven was 89, really? That's crazy. Let me... Oh, and Anastasia, too, but that's, I think, is one of his worst movies. Let me quickly look up what this uh, Don Bluth's full... Um, I was going to say cast list, but that's not the right word. Full, like, set of credits, because I think it's pretty crazy at the, at the end of everything. See. Alright, one moment. Because uh, I need to get a sip. Uh, I've been going for a while. This is showing up, I think, on the. Um, I think this is going up on. What's today? Friday? No, today's Saturday. This is going up on Sunday. Um, I got a message. It's probably from Mr. Booty himself. Okay, so. I'm gonna get into what Don Bluth has done with his life. So first of all, he was the in the animation department for Sleeping Beauty. He was in it for these are all I think he did stuff he animated. So or helped in animation in some way. He was the assistant animator on Sleeping Beauty and Sword in the Stone, The Journey Back to Oz. He was the layout artist. He was a character animator in Robin Hood, the everyone's favorite furry dream, which is why furries exist. Um, he did the animator on the tight. He was the animator in the titles for Escape to Witch Mountain, which was the original version, not the rock version. Uh, the one that came out in like 1975, which I think is a really weird ass movie. Um, he was an animator on the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. He did the Rescuers. He was the director and the animation uh, and the animation department. Well, obviously he's a director. He's in the animation. Um, the Rescuers, which is a bad movie. <laughs> At least from what I remember. It's the one with the mouses. Um, that's all I really can remember. It. It's the one with the mouses that's not the great mouse detective. Uh, and then we got Peach Dragon. He was the director of. Xanadu, he was an animator for. The Fox and the Hound, an animator. And then at this point, he leaves. Um, he le Ooh, let me look at this rotation real quick. At this point, he now leaves Disney to form his own studio. So now he's doing The Secret of Mim. He is the director, he is the producer, he is the writer, and he is full on in the animation form. He did the story adaptation, he is the layout artist, he was a visual development, he was all of that. He's all of that for The Secret of Mim, and he wrote it too. Uh, in American Tale, he was not a writer, he did everything else. Uh, or he helped in the departments of everything else. Obviously, this is not a one person job of sorts. Uh, Landed Before Time, same deal. All Dogs Go to Heaven. He was a writer on that one. Uh, then we got Rockadoodle. This is actually the clown. Oh, Rockadoodle. Have you ever seen Rockadoodle? Because I bet no one has. It's based off the... Um, it's all based off the French play, I think. It's called, like, Charlemagne? No, not Charlemagne, because Charlemagne is the name of a, a nightman. It's named, like...
Chanticleer. There you go, Chanticleer. Um, I remembered it now. Um, sh but if you don't know the story of Chanticleer, Chanticleer was the story of a rooster who basically acted like tough shit in the farmhouse because it was believed that um, his crows are what actually bred out the sun. So he treated he was treated he was treating it as if like oh yeah I'm actually the one who gets the sun. So he he would brag to all the animals and he would show he would shoot, pop off and do all that good stuff. But then eventually Chanticleer got into a fight and nobody backed him up and he was like, oh, y'all are fake. And he's like, well, you're an asshole. Why would we help you? We just wanted to see you fuck, get fucked up because this, that's what everyone did when Chanticleer got into a fight is that Chanticleer, um, they, they fought like crazy. He fought like crazy with another rooster and then got his ass kicked. Um, and then it ends up being that it's revealed that he doesn't actually summon the sun, that he's just a rooster. He's just the same as everyone else. Um, so that story is a, a French play, and then they made it into an animated version where everything I said is not anything like it, I think. Um, he actually is able to summon the sun, and also he's based off of Elvis. Uh, Rockadoodle's a very bad movie. I would not, um, I would never, I would actually suggest you not watch Rockadoodle at all. Uh, Chanticleer was also supposed to be one of Disney's um, animated features. Um, it was supposed to. They, it was uh, instead of Robin Hood, which they made, which as I mentioned, it was the furry, the the furry movie. Um, instead of going with Chanticleer, they went with Robin Hood instead. Um, the same design artist that worked that did the designs for Chanticleer also did America Sings and did all that other stuff. Anyway, Rockadoodle, he did all of that in Rockadoodle. He did, unfortunately, he did. Uh, he did animation. He wrote. He produced it. Very bad time. He also did Thumbelina. I think on Thumbelina, though, it looks like he was not a, um, he was not actually in the animation department, which is crazy. Uh, Troll in Central Park, same situation. Oh, Troll in Central Park is bad. The Pebble and the Penguin, like, that's also very bad. Um, Bartok, Def Magnificent, a direct -to video movie, Titan AE, and then finally Dragon's Lair, the movie. So, to say that he had a fall would be, like kind i would say um but he had a prolific work when he was working obviously his early stuff is still great and as i mentioned he made dragon's lair uh he was the director and producer of it i mean and so if you ever see that princess daphne you can thank him for princess daphne because he totally helped with that um oh god that man was horny as hell too you want to talk about like current horny anime um art twitter he was doing it and getting paid for it and Disney bucks. It's crazy times, man. All right, let's see. How far are we in this, by the way? Uh, just to show you how easy it is to kind of grind out Dokkan. Uh, I've been barely paying attention to anything going on here, and I've been, I think, winning pretty easily. Uh, can I actually do all this? I think no one would want to watch this if it's super long, but... Hell, we're already this deep into it. May as well go all the way, right? It's been a while since we have Dokkan stuff. Uh, not that I don't mind making Dokkan videos, is that just sometimes, like, I don't pull a lot, so, like, there's nothing for me to do. Unless I start thinking of, like, oh, what if so-and-so fought so-and-so in this fake idea I made? But then it's like, well, I have to make those ideas worth something. Because if I do it, like, all haphazardly, I don't think it will be very entertaining anyway. Oh, man. All right, let me go back to Dom Luke's work. Oh, such a... I thought he worked on Anastasia, though. Did he not work Anastasia? What was your... Yeah, it says right here, you worked on Anastasia. You were directing... Damn it, Wikipedia. It literally said that he did not work on Anastasia here. Are you showing me a truncated version? Oh, never mind. Anastasia was right after the pebble. We have to be more than halfway done. We're almost done. I may as well just finish this off. Oh man, what what time zone are we in in Animal Crossing? We're in 2 p.m., baby. We might actually be able to finish it all. Um, oh boy, what's what's going on down here? I'm gonna look down real quick. Wow, there's two? You fight two of them? That's crazy. Let me quickly go. And then you'll go. And then I'll go here. 
Uh, just try not to get us killed. Majin Vegeta. Man. Who even was in Anastasia? Let me look at this. Meg Ryan? Holy shit, she was Anastasia? How far had you fallen, Meg Ryan? Also the last person I think in the world that I would ha not not to say anything against Meg Ryan for her fantastic work and everything. Um, the last person I would think of to ever do um, one of these type of movies. I should also get rid of this um, STR Majin Vegeta from the team because he's going to cost me this fight, isn't he? He's just not doing any damage. Oh, he didn't cost me anything. Um, let's go here. Who else was it? John Cusack as a young con man and a former servant of the Romanovs. Kelsey Grammer? He plays that weird bat, right? No, he doesn't. He plays a nobleman. Christopher Lloyd. Now that's the man who plays Rasputin. So he didn't play the bat? Who the fuck plays the bat? Is it Robin Williams? Uh, let's see. Hank Azaria. I was close. He's Bartok. I think Hank Azaria eventually took over the role of Genie, if I'm remembering correct, in... Aladdin to the return of Jafar. Let me check that up though. Let me see. Films. He was in, he was in Godzilla, unfortunately. Um, let me look down here real quick. Everything seems fine. Alright, let's see. was in The Simpsons, right? Anyway. Christian Dunst was in this? That's crazy. I'm gonna look away from this. Oh, J.K. Simmons was in it. Have you guys ever seen the, um, the buff picture of J.K. Simmons from the Batman movie? Um, from the Batman movie, I guess that's never coming out. That was supposed to be with Beth, like, um, it was, like, crazy. Cause he was like, I'm yeah, I'm gonna replace Majin Vegeta after this um, interval right here. I don't need him in the team anymore. He's holding me back. Um, yeah, look up J.K. Simmons at the gym. That man was like stupid ripped. He was like, I don't understand why he was getting ripped because he was playing Commissioner Gordon, which is like the last thing you need to get ripped for. <laughs> if anything, he needed to get skittier. Because uh, Commissioner Gordon is a very skinny man, at least from what I can remember. Alright, let me just quickly, before I start talking about Commissioner Gordon. There you go, heal. Go heal. Uh, right here. Hmm, it'd be good to put in here. Some good selecting music. I should probably go with Bardock. He's a hero, I think. Alright, let's get back into it. But yeah, look him up. He was like crazy buff, and I guess he's never gonna be in the movie. <laughs> Because I don't know if they're going with them, to be honest. Um, seems weird if they are. Uh, I wouldn't mind it, though. I love J.K. Simmons. He's my favorite of the Eminem actors. He plays the oh, yellow Eminem, if you don't know. Um, which I constantly forget about, because when I hear the yellow Eminem, I don't hear J.K. Simmons. I hear the yellow Eminem. So the yellow Eminem is, as far as I'm concerned, a real person, similar to how um, uh, Big Bird is his own person, and then there's the person who voices Big Bird. Kermit the Frog, similar situation. There's Kermit the Frog, and then there is the people who voice Kermit the Frog over the years. Which I think has only been two, but anyway. How disappointed must he have been, like, year by year, as he was like, so... Am I gonna keep this ripped physique or not? Because, like, <laughs> it ain't easy. Uh, I don't know if you've been to the gym lately, because I have. Looked at my crazy muscles. I don't get it. Like, I mean, I do get it for the most part. Like, actors who get crazy, like, ripped for a role. But sometimes it's like, like, why would you get ripped to play Commissioner Gordon? That's, like, the last person I would ever think of, like, should, that should have muscles. It's like... I've just been casted to play a whooper. I better get, like, fucking buff. And it's like, no, idiot. It's, first of all, it's a voice acting role. It's like if Ryan Reynolds was, like, heard he was, like, going to be Pikachu's. He's like, all right, I'm going to be a mouse and I'm going to shoot electricity from me now. 
And then I'm also gonna get stupid buff, because that's what Pikachu is, right? And it's like, no. Pikachu's not buff. Pikachu just is. Um, let that be food for thought for you. Pikachu's not buff. He just is. We go here. I'm finally looking down just because I don't want to hurry it up a little bit. There we go. Um, boop, 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 boop. Good job, Khalifa. Khalifla? Yeah. Good girl. But yeah, I don't... I don't know, man. I don't know if they're gonna make a new Batman. I don't want Batman to be in the... I don't want them to make a new Batman if it means that they have to be in the same universe as that, like, weird Joker movie. Because I don't... I mean, obviously they're gonna make another Batman, but Patterson Batman should be nothing like that world at all. Which is unfortunate, because they're gonna have to kill his parents one more time. How many times can you see his parents die? And I feel like I'm one of the people who's like, that's important to his character. I think you should show it to him. But I think we've just been done so many times recently. Like, it's too quick. You, like, keep showing it. You keep killing these damn parents. Um, so it loses all meaning behind it. They have to start showing better ways of actually delivering you how his parents died. Um, speaking of, now that I'm pretty positive no one has made it this far into the video, unless they're super into me, uh, I can finally let out the truth, which is that I don't think Batman Begins is a very good movie. I do not like Batman Begins at all. Um, I don't know why, though. Like, I keep thinking about it, and I think all the arguments that I can think of... I can't really make an argument against Batman Begins. All I can say is that I think Batman Begins is really boring and not a good origin story at all. It's like... Um, what's the best way to put it? It's kind of like... It's kind of like... Duh... Have you ever felt like the like the word duh? I feel like that's what Batman Begins is to me. It's like I don't know. People always praise it as like better than the Dark Knight. They're like, oh yeah, the Dark Knight is perfectly good, but the actual good one is this one. And I'm like, are you fucking high? Because in no world is this one. If anything, I would say it's the worst. And that's the one where people are like, now you're crazy. You can't be one. Whoa worse than the Bane one. The Bane one is trash. And I'm like, the Bane one's entertaining, at least. I can find some enjoyment out of the Bane movie. I can find you no entertainment from Batman Begins. It's such an unfun journey <laughs> into, like, um, into everything. I thought I heard a voice. I was, like, freaked out. I think it was the song, though. Are we really about to go close to an hour on this? This is kind of crazy. This is the longest thing of Dokkan that's not to be released, to be honest. This is the longest grind and talk I think I've ever done. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? So yeah, I don't like Batman Begins very much. I'm not like it's to the point where I'm like, oh, making fun of everyone who likes it. Like, I don't, if you like it, you like it. I don't care. Um, I just never was able to find any fun out of it, which sucks because it feels like you ever get that feeling where um, everyone's enjoying something, but you're not, so you feel weird about it? Uh, I kind of feel that way, funny enough, about um, Kakarot, because everyone seems to be having a great time with it. And some of this, what I'm about to say, is because I don't actually have the game, so I don't know how it plays, but the gameplay just looks, like, boring. Like, not really fun to me, so I don't get it. But then everyone who plays it says it's super fun. So maybe it's just one of those things where it's like super... Here's another thing is I don't think I can actually trust... Um... I don't know if I can actually trust Dragon Ball fans with what they think a Dragon Ball game is good or not. Because I think what they consider a good Dragon Ball game is different from what people would consider a good game. So I feel that people give it like a pass for the gameplay where it's like it's fun and it's repetitive. And I guess you can have fun with that too. But I guess I want more... What I wanted was Paper Mario, but Goku. And it's unfair to the game, because it was never trying to be that. But that's what I wanted. But uh, one day I'm going to pick it up, just not right now. I'm actually one of the few people who, I think, plays Dokkan that is not actively streaming <laughs> Kakarot right now. Which, to be fair, to all the people like D-Free, um, Rhyme, Nano, and the countless others who are streaming Kakarot, 
I say go for it. Because you're never going to get another chance like this unless a year passes. I feel like it was probably the same way with Fighter Z, where Fighter Z came out and it was like a, fresh, a breath of fresh air. No more just like pure legend content, no more pure um, Dokkan content, and then of course pour 40 out for poor Buchigiri match. Damn shame. If it literally had not come out in a browser, I would be playing it over Legends. That's how I feel about it. But uh, it had some of the greatest looking animations I feel out of anything. It was so beautiful looking. And it's a shame for it to be gone like that. Um, but yeah, like, a lot of people are playing it. So I want to say almost everyone who's doing any form of Dokkan videos, like I was saying, is playing it. Um, so I end up seeing a lot of gameplay from it, and they seem to be enjoying it. I think they are genuinely like people who like Dragon Ball games, so they're having a good ass time, like experiencing the story. I'm not trying to say like, oh man, are you playing, you're pulling me on? Because they're not. They're 100% not. They are legitimately having a fun time with the game. Um, but I just look at it and I go like, really? Maybe it's one of those things like it's a, it's a, it's a grower, not a shower. So when you actually play it, you actually feel it. We'll see. This is also close to 40 minutes long, so I'm just gonna cut, and then when I come back, we'll be at we'll be at the final level. Until then, I'll be back. Bye. All right, I'm back. I decided to just show the remaining things because I realized I'm just grinding in the background while listening to Animal Crossing music, so I may as well just vibe out with everyone. Uh, you only miss like one level. Other things seem to be going much smoother now. I um, ascension awoken the. Um, the Super Saiyan Z Goku. He's really good. Uh, which is the whole reason I'm doing this. Because uh, I want him. And I need him. So I'm going to have him. Easy as that. Alright, let's see. What am I? Three. Alright. We're going to get there. Let me tell you. As much as I do love these easy A's. Specifically this kind. It really is a slog to get through 30 levels. It's worth a third of the, for the 30 stones. So don't, don't get me wrong. Um. I love the 30 stones. I would never... If the answer was, um, would you want to do this less or get 30 stones? And the answer is, give me the 30 damn stones. Because that's what I'm going to pick every single time. Um, it's the only right answer as far as I'm concerned. Go here. Um, and I'm going to need them because I ended up spending a... Um, I ended up spending some stones on a multi for to see if I could get hit or Kaba, because I, I didn't get any of them. But that's fine. Man, poor tech hit, by the way. He got, like, demolished by STR hit. Like, there's no reason to run tech hit except for his leader skill now. Shame. Real shame. But, you know, obviously, for the people who love his super attack, they're just gonna go for it, man. You'll be perfectly fine playing Doke on that way anyway. Like, um, it sucks if you really uh, care about, like, I guess optimal gameplay, but as someone who doesn't, it ends up being like, that's dumb, but it's fine. I wouldn't mind a tech hit if I got him, obviously. Um, it sucks for everyone at Global, though. There's all the people who are like, um, oh my god, here it is, our knight, our knight in shining armor, we voted for him, and the idea of, like, not even a year later... He's been outmoded by a freaking um, weirdly limited banner unit. To be fair, I think that SDR hit is more, it's harder to get than actual hit is. So, it's weird. It sucks. But hey, that's Dokkan. You can cry with me as I continue to wait for a Rayleigh to come back. We can be cry brothers. Wow. I might actually lose this one. Oh no, I won't. Because I have a lot of defense. Yeah, I have too much defense to actually lose here. Mm -hmm. Go here. Now go here for here. Now for here, I'll go here. Oh man, this is some good music, by the way. This is the perfect music to, like, play Animal Crossing to and nothing else, I think. Um, but it's good for grinding. Because it gets you into a... It's not like make you feel like amped up, I guess. Which is, I guess, what a lot of people want for like world tournament grinds and stuff. But for me, it just makes me feel like, yeah. Having a good time. Just listening. It also vaguely sounds like Donkey Kong 64 music. Like, right? Can't you imagine, like, DK 
to this song. And then you just hear like, Wah. oh man, rip to that field stream. Me and my brother tried to do of Donkey Kong 64. Well, I did try, but it was not in the cards. Super Saiyan 2, and you get two pretty strong Super Saiyan 2s from this, um, from this event. Though, to be fair, if you never pulled them, then I guess you don't actually have two very strong Super Saiyan 2s. I can't imagine someone who doesn't have these guys, honestly, because they're super easy to get. They're stupid easy to get, I would say. They just show up. I don't even, I didn't even want my almost rainbow version of them, but I got them anyway. Okay. Alright, we're getting closer and closer to the end here. Damn, I can't believe this is almost an hour long. If you made it this far, man, you should tell me in the comments. If you made it this far, you obviously care enough about me to keep watching this. Uh, I doubt there's anyone who's actually watched more than five minutes of this. And don't try and lie and say you have, because YouTube tells me if you have or not, and a vast majority of people have decided to no for a lot of my stuff. It's okay, though. It's just the way it is. I get it. I'm the same way, actually, is that I'll start videos and then I'll, I'll leave them behind or something. But I usually do it for, like, the three-minute-long, like, music video type videos. There's a hole in my pants, which is very unfortunate. I just realized it now. These are really nice pants, too. I should throw them away. I'm not really picky about it, though. That's how far we've gone that you know I've run out of stuff to talk about is that I'm talking about my damn pants. It be like that, man. Oh, please. Why couldn't you just kill him, Vegeta? God damn it. God damn it, Vegeta. That's why no one likes you. Okay. I take that back. You're a pretty cool guy. Oh, come on, Khalifa. I didn't even notice that, you're, that you weren't even um, supering. I'll go here. Okay, I guess he was... Oh, wait. Actually... Yeah. yeah. Go here. Then hopefully, you and um, Kale over here will be able to kill him or else you're gonna take a direct shot in the face over here. Bardock. What even is your animation, Super Saiyan 2? That's not bad. There's a lot worse animations you could run by for sure. Boop. Oh no, she didn't kill him. You're totally gonna super, aren't you? Oh, son of a fucking bitch. Kill you, space hooker. How dare you not kill him? Oh, it didn't even do that much damage, it's fine. I take back the statement that you're a space hooker. Because you're totally not. Uh, let me see, right? Nope. That should be enough to kill. I swear to god, if this man is still alive after this rotation, these units need to be... They need to get their shit together if, this, if they're both still alive after this turn. I mean, I'm low in HP, but it's fine. Because Vegeta will beat up Vegeta. Bam! Good job, Vegeta. You did it. Technically speaking, you should only be super strong if there's a Goku enemy, I think, on the field. Which there is, but... Alright. Getting down to it. I think this is the first grind talk where I fully completed a grind. Ugh. Oh, the grind is so bad I have to stand up. But we're almost there, everyone. Everyone who's still watching. Just two more. Okay, okay. Whew. Alright. Doesn't it kind of look like Goku's <laughs> kicking Vegeta in the ass in that picture? Or maybe it's just me. It totally looks like, like that way to me. Siri here should be good. Go right there. 
keep fighting him. Yeah, we'll go up here. Everyone can super attack this turn. Oh no! Please have your defenses up, Vegeta. Please have your defenses up. He did. I mean, it was also ag agility, so it wasn't actually going to hurt him all that much. Alright. You couldn't go for the double attack, huh? That's fine. LR Gohan will get him. With the Vegeta support. They should have really redone this animation from the floor up, man. Because that Vegeta still looks jank, and so does that sprite when it's taking a Kamehameha to the stupid-ass face. Let's see. Hmm. Everyone's arrived. Okay. I mean, everyone's going to be hitting Vegeta this turn. Ain't no stopping that. Alright. Then we have perfect setup for LR Gohan in the next turn. Uh, this is why... Eh, you know, the, the, the grind is more enjoyable when I'm doing it like this. That reminds me, I also have to get back to the Da Vinci grind at some point. I just, like, can't justify it in my head to, like, get this done first. Unless it's on a video, I guess. Then I'm like, okay, I can prioritize it better now. Of course you're gonna super right there. Oh, Majin Vegeta, you prick. Prick who does no damage, that is. We're almost at the final level. Come on. Come on. I can't believe you. You'll dodge all this, but you won't kill the man. Alright, fine. Let me see for this one. I think I'm gonna go here, because that's, uh... That should be insta-death to anyone who can't touches it. And then, unfortunately, Bardock can't really do anything. Even if he gets anything. Unless he gets a crit, he's not gonna do much. Thus is the life of support. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, my duped out Gohan. I'm telling you, man. Pulling LRs, that's the way to play. No LR life, not for me anymore. Nice, nice, nice. This is the last one. Alright, everyone. Let's get it done. Let's beat it, let's beat it. That sounded wrong, but it's okay. Final level. Here we are. 69% obviously this is the this is the Vegeta that's going for our hearts the one at 69% I wonder if anyone does oh. <laughs> we've been playing so long that the it's reached um, Halloween that's hilarious set up for my, my, my next turn, dudes. Now, this is some bloopy-ass music. Oh, Vegeta, why do you try? We're never even gonna do any damage to the Majin Vegeta. It's technically Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, but whatever. Gohan! Right in the face. Sadness. Kale, do your little punch, and then hopefully don't take a super to the face. Good job. Alright, let's see here. Okay, obviously going here. Okay, yo. And then, right, yo. Perfection. I really hope Vegeta dies in this rotation. I want to see you die. Die, 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 die. Jesus Christ. A lot of damage. Not enough to kill, though. It is what it is. Do, do, do. Uh, why did Khalifa, why does your head go, like, so small when you start that animation? It bothers me so much. You're lucky you're good. Oh, come on, counter in this face. Oh. Should be enough to activate his guard, I think. Uh, I'll keep targeting you. And if 
for this. Go here. Even if he doesn't survive. I, he'll be able to... The agility Goku should be down this turn, I think. Come on. Kick his ass. Kick his ass. Eh, good enough. Gohan will be able to finish him off now. And then we'll leave our good old boys and boys and girls in blue to take him down from here. Actually, I think Khalifa was put off rotation, so it might actually be the two boys in blue and one in girl. But we'll see. Why do you gotta transform? Why are you popping off on him like that? Alright. Uh, we'll end it this way, because I think it's thematic. Alright, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me for this grind dog. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, as always. I'm interested to see if you have any comments about this. Um, I'm Boki, and I'm going to be saying goodbye now, so I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this close to an hour long video. Jesus Christ. Goodbye. Thank you.